Before we get into today's video, first a big thanks to our sponsors at NordVPN. Get 68% off by going to nordvpn.com for slash sensor gaming or checking out the link in the description. NordVPN allows you to surf the web as if you were located in over 60 countries when you can bypass filters and regional restrictions. It also keeps your internet data secure so you get safe when browsing and they recently passed an independent audit which confirmed their strict no data logging policy. This alongside being based in Panama, a region known for being a haven for data privacy means your info will always be kept private. So again, get a huge 68% off by going to nordvpn.com forward slash sensor gaming or checking out the link in the description. And even more, get an extra month for free by using the code sensor gaming at checkout. August has seen not just Fantasy Star Online 2 being released on Steam, but also story content from Episode 4 being finally made available outside of Japan. For those out of the loop, the MMO was originally released in Japan way back in 2012. 12th, and it wasn't until April 2020 that the game was officially made available in North America. This means there's still a lot of catching up to do for the international version. And alongside this, the new update originally only brought part of Episode 4's story, with the rest coming in a later update last week. Now that Episode 4 has fully been released outside of Japan though, it's been spotted that there were a number of curious changes made to the international version. Episode 4 is set four years after the event of episode 3 and begins with a red-haired female student called Hitsugi waking up after playing the video game Fantasy Star Online 2 and finding a confused male character who looks exactly like her avatar from the game in her bed. And it's here where international players will be able to find one of the changes. In the original Japanese version of the game, the male avatar character is presented completely naked, presumably to supplement the idea that this character is out of this world and not from planet Earth. In the international version of the game, However, this scene was modified so that the male character is wearing clothes, and alongside this, the dialogue had to be altered in places due to the original dialogue, making numerous references to the nudity and Hitsugi's understandable shock at finding herself in this situation. Another story change that's been made outside of Japan is the complete removal of three cutscenes that involve the characters taking public baths together at different points in the story. Public baths are a common thing in Japanese culture, and so the depiction of this is something that can be found in lots of Japanese media. But an interesting fact about these removed scenes is that despite being removed from the international version, they actually still got dubbed in English and the voice lines were left in the game's files. This means that a YouTuber has made a video, which is what you are seeing clips from on screen now, with the English lines added to the Japanese release and the text translated to English. And so if you're interested in checking out the full video then you'll be able to find a link in the description. But on top of those changes, there are also some other alterations made to scenes during chapter 5. Due to plot related reasons, various points within this chapter's story will depict Hitsugi without clothes during cutscenes. This is only the case in the Japanese version though, as overseas she is now depicted fully clothed. Whilst that seems to be the extent of the major changes brought on by the new episode 4 update, this isn't the first time for the game to get alterations outside of Japan. Other changes that have been made to the game include the character height slider when creating your character. For some reason, the international version minimal height is set notably taller than over in Japan. This could have possibly been due to concern over characters being made to look too young in appearance, but as for any official explanations on why these changes have been made, there have currently been no comments. It's also worth pointing out that the game has been assigned a mature rating by the ESRB. Of course, however, with the game now being released 8 years ago in Japan and considering the nature of MMO games and the large amounts of content that they have, there are various other differences that can be found between the versions. Some of these changes are the result of trying to rebalance the game considering the big difference in time spans since the original Japanese release, or due to the large amount of content it's perhaps planned for future updates. Other changes though include various licensing deals that have been made over in Japan where dozens of big names have had crossover events in the game. These include the likes of Nier, Persona, as well as Attack on Titan. Some of these crossovers may never see a release outside of Japan, as it's not just down to Sega, but whether the other legal parties involved also agree. However, in Persona's case, fans will be pleased to know that August 12th saw a Persona crossover event for the international version. This event, dubbed Persona Paradox, features items from previous Japanese events. These being the Persona 5 collab in December 2016, Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight, and Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight in June 2018, and then Persona 3 and 4 back in December 
2018. Another difference that can be found overseas is down to the localization work and that there are numerous differences in names and terminology between the two versions. But aside from this, an aspect of the localization that fans have been rather critical about is the much sparser item descriptions outside of Japan. Whilst the Japanese version's item descriptions are often full of lots of flavor text and lore, quite often the English translation can be left very bare bones currently, which is something fans have been quite vocal about over on the official forums. It's also worth mentioning that there's an unofficial fan patch for the Japanese version that's been available for some time now called Fantasy Star Online 2 Tweaker, and it's been actively maintained. Plus, alongside the translation work, the Tweaker brings a bunch of other options and fixes to the game. Are you a Fantasy Star Online fan, and what are your thoughts on the changes made outside of Japan? As always, please let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and once again, a big thanks to our faithful sponsors at NordVPN. There will be a link in the description if you want to go check their big discount out, and until next time, thank you for watching.